welcome to part two. Towards the end of the last video, I started making a leg base for the bookcase cabinet that I'm working on modifying for my brother. The next job was to mark up where I wanted to cut some mortises to hold dominoes or floating tenons. In the past, I would have either cut the mortises by hand or used dowels instead, but the domino helps to speed things up a lot. In fact, I spent less than half the amount of time doing it this way than I would have normally. I then marked what would be the outside corner of each leg with an O and I made marks for which faces would need mortises just so that I wouldn't get confused and cut anything in the wrong place. With all the joints cut I glued in the floating tenons and assembled everything. I clamped everything together tightly with F clamps and parallel clamps and then to check for square I measured the distance from the legs corner to corner and the dimensions were almost exactly the same. It was out by about 2mm but that's close enough for me. While it was clamped up I used some sandpaper to soften the bottom edges of each leg just to help prevent grain tear out. To secure the leg base to the bottom of the unit I decided to use a couple of pieces of scrap wood to make some cleats. I drilled some pilot holes and then I glued and screwed it in place to the longer rails. I could then add glue to the top edges and secure it to the bottom of the cabinet with screws. This should make for a really strong assembly. I used a walnut stain to add a darker colour tone to both the legs and the apron rails and blend everything together. This colour will be darker than the teak colour of the rest of the unit but it looked pretty good to me. Although it did have a bit of a reddish colour tone to it so I added some boiled linseed oil once the stain had dried just to give it more of an amber colour tone to better complement the teak. Next I could start making doors for the cabinet section and for that I'd be using the back panel that I removed at the start of this project because it's already the perfect colour. The trouble was it was only about 5mm thick so it's not rigid enough to use on its own but I had some more 5mm plywood which I could laminate to it. I cut away the rough parts of the teak plywood and then I could cut it down to the size I needed at the table saw and straighten up that circular saw cut that I'd made too. Before I could laminate the pieces together I first needed to sand away the old finish on the back of the plywood. Then I added wood glue with a mini roller and with the plywood sitting on the flat surface of my workbench I placed the other piece of plywood on top and piled on some heavy stuff on top of some battens to help distribute the weight evenly. While waiting for the glue to dry on that I could spend some time cleaning up some of the damage on the rest of the unit. I didn't have time to do a complete refinish so I just concentrated on the biggest problem areas. First there was the water stain on this shelf and I thought I'd try using oxalic acid to remove it. I got some hot water and added a bit of the acid and mixed it up. I applied the solution directly over the top of the old finish. Whenever it dried off in the sun I reapplied the solution trying to keep it wet. It seemed to be working quite well but it was still visible so I applied one more coat and then once that was dry I washed off all of the solution with some warm soapy water to make sure to get rid of all of the acid. And when that dried off there were a few really dry areas where the unit had the most wear at the front and also the water stain area so I applied some boiled linseed oil to the entire shelf to re-nourish the wood. And it came out great, the water stain had disappeared so after letting the oil soak in for about half an hour I wiped away any excess and a couple of days after that once the oil had cured I added a top coat of acrylic spray varnish just to seal it and protect it from any future damage. I also wanted to clean up the solid wood edging as it was really untidy in places. I did a bit of sanding and a bit of scraping to clean off the old finish and stain which was so thin that it came off really easily. The solid wood used for this trim is really light in colour. I don't know what kind of wood this is but it definitely needed staining. I first applied some shellac sanding sealer for two reasons. First it would help to give the wood more of an amber colour tone and it will also seal the wood so that the stain I use doesn't soak into it so much. 
I used some walnut stain, which wasn't really the perfect color match, but I could just wipe it away and reapply where necessary to get the color as close as possible to the teak colored panels. And then I sealed the edges with acrylic spray varnish too to give them a nice sheen. I should really be wearing a respirator here, but instead I just held my breath. And while I was at it, I could also spray the leg base too. That was the end of day two, and on day three, I could check the plywood glue up, and I found it was now nice and rigid. And the edges looked just like it had always been a thicker piece of plywood rather than two pieces glued together. I made some rip cuts at the table saw to clean up the edges, and then I used my panel sled to cut the doors to size. I'd need some hinges for the doors and I had thought about using brass hinges originally which would be more in keeping with this style of furniture but in the end I settled on some Euro style cabinet hinges for a few reasons. Firstly they can be mounted to the inside of the cabinet rather than the outside so that they won't be visible and secondly they are fully adjustable which makes it easy to square up the doors to the carcass and also get the doors level. And because they'll be hidden on the inside of the cabinet my brother really wasn't concerned about how they looked. I got these from Toolstation in the UK and these hinges didn't come with any instructions whatsoever so I first made a test piece just by experimenting with different placements of the hinge using a couple of pieces of scrap wood which were the same thickness as my door and side panels. So I've got a problem, the hinges that I bought are designed so that the doors sit on the front face of these edges and there needs to be a gap of about three millimeters to allow the door to swing open. The problem I have is that these edges are not flush. So if I fit the door as is, there's going to be a pretty substantial gap at the top and at the bottom. But I know that this front trim is about an inch thick of solid wood. So what I'm actually going to do is trim this back and make it flush with the top and bottom edges. I use the hand plane to flush up the edges. That didn't take long at all and then I did some sanding too. Of course this change meant that I then needed to refinish the edges with shellac, stain and spray varnish again. Next I could mark up the location of the hinges onto the carcass based on the measurements that I'd used for my test piece. I used an awl to mark the screw locations, I drilled pilot holes and then fitted one half of the hinge. For the other half of the hinge, I then found another problem, which was that my doors, which were about 10 millimeters thick, were not quite thick enough to accommodate the cut part of the hinge. So I cut some MDF to size to fit around the perimeter of the inside of the doors. I could then mark up where to install the cut part of the hinge and then drill out the holes using a 35 millimeter Forstner bit. And then I could glue and nail the MDF in place. and then the hinges just got secured with screws. I then found some wood that I could use to trim the edges of the doors to hide the plywood and MDF edge grain. I'm not sure what wood this is, it could be a bit of Sapili sap wood possibly, but whatever it is, it ended up being a really nice color match for the teak, as you'll see later when I add oil. These pieces were glued and secured to the edges of the doors and then flush cut to length. Then after a bit of sanding to flush up the trim with the front face of the doors, I could add boiled linseed oil which blended everything together really nicely. Okay, so now it's confession time. I really had a hard time fitting the hinges for the doors. I'm actually quite embarrassed by the amount of time it took me to fit them properly. And I'd love to be able to explain to you what I did wrong and what I learned from the process, but to be honest, I can't. It was just a case of trying a combination of different things, trial and error, until it finally worked. There are two things I can tell you though. Firstly, I needed to fit another piece of MDF to the inside of the carcass to space out the hinges from the side panel a little more. And I later stained those pieces of MDF to better match the inside of the cabinet. And secondly, I found that it helped to round over the back edge of the door, which I did using my block plane. 
and that allowed the doors to be fitted closer to the front face of the carcass, giving the doors a little more space to swing open properly. When all that was done, I could finally fit the doors. And I used the adjustment screws to square up the doors and get the spacings as good and as even as I could get them. Once the oil had fully cured on the cabinet doors, I gave them a top coat of acrylic spray varnish. And then I denibbed the parts of the unit that I'd refinished earlier on with some 400 grit wet and dry, and then applied a final top coat of spray varnish. The final job was to cut the adjustable shells to size, and that was just a case of offering them up to the new opening, making a mark, cutting them at the mitre saw, and then I could install these new brass shelf pins which I bought on eBay and I put the shelves on. My brother ordered some brass handles for the cabinet doors and they've not yet arrived but anyway personally I like the way that it looks without the handles and the doors work well enough without them so they may or may not get fitted at a later date but for now I'm calling this project done. This one was way more work than I had anticipated. I had expected it to take a couple of days, but it ended up taking more than three days, probably about 20 hours in total. But I'm happy with how this piece of furniture has been transformed from being something worn, damaged, and kind of clunky looking to something that looks much cleaner and more elegant. And I think the new doors that I made really look in keeping with the mid-century style. I'm also really happy with the way that the legs look. They are darker in color than the rest of the unit, but I kind of like that look. Using the domino for this project was a real time saver and it was also good to get more practice using it because it's still new to me and I now feel much more confident using it on those more important paid commission jobs. This project is far from perfect though, it really could have done with a complete strip down and refinish to clean up particularly the inside of the side panels which had some stains on them and also the damage to the inside of the cabinet where the drawer runners were removed but that doesn't really matter to my brother because he's going to be filling this with books anyway so you won't be able to see any of that. I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. You can also support the channel via Patreon and receive early access to my videos exclusive content, project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos too. I'll leave a link to that page in the description box below if you're interested. Thank you for watching.